Good morning. I know I saw the I saw the thing. It said 1046. That was a minute ago. So we're behind. That's okay. We're glad to see everyone this morning. So glad you're here. Uh, I know it's kind of gloomy outside, but that's all right. It's bright and cheery in here. And we are going to be singing Christmas carols, so everybody just join in. Our first song is going to be Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So if you'll stand with us, if you can, please stand and do Hark the Herald Angels. I'll tell you what I was looking out while we were singing and uh, there's somebody that's out there I'll just tell you who it is it was Miss Donna she just smiles and smiles and smiles and sings and she was looking straight towards heaven and I thought God's right there with her right with her I mean it was just a bounding out of your face I love to look at you because it encourages me Encourages me. In that, in that the way I've never seen pain. I just know God comes right out of her. Oh, all right. We're gonna sing "Angels We Have Heard on High."
say something. I know for a fact on December the 1st, there was a lady that passed away that was my best friend. And I know she is in God's presence, singing in his choir. Boy, it got a better choir when she went up there. That woman could sing. Woo! She could sing. I just, I, th I thought of it when it says she's, the choir of angels are singing. She's up there with them singing. Amen. Thank you, Sister Christy, and uh, thank you this morning for being here in our service. It's just, uh, I know your Sister Christy said earlier it's kind of gloomy outside, but it is uh, a joy to be in the Lord's house today. And we've got visitors here, certainly glad that you chose to come and be with us today and worship with us. And, uh, you know, this time of year always is just a special time of year because we're reminded of just the hope and the reality of God's love for us. And uh, Matthew chapter 1 uh, 23 says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted God with us. And he is truly with us today, and I'm certainly glad for that reality, that Christ would come into the world, make God known, that we can have hope and have faith and have everlasting life in him. Because not only the life that he lived, but the life that he gave, that we can have forgiveness of sins. And that's what we celebrate today, and that's what we're going to sing and rejoice over today as we go through the rest of our service today. So again, it's just a joy to have you in our service. This time, you would just bow with me as we pray. Father, we want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for the day. Thank you for all the things that you do in this time of year that we can reflect and, and know, God, that you are with us and that you made yourself known to us and, and uh, your plan of salvation, that we can have hope, eternal life through faith and trust in Jesus. And we pray all these things in his precious name. Amen. And we'll worship together.
once again it's joy to have you in our service this morning and I appreciate the song service and this time uh, I ask y'all stand and we'll prepare to receive our offering this morning and uh, ushers come forward we'll we'll do that this morning and uh, this time of year you know we celebrate a lot of things but uh, part of our celebration should be willingness to give give to the Lord the things that he's given to us you know through his goodness and through his grace I know that you know, oftentimes we, we often think about things in a selfish way, but uh, we ought to be very grateful for the things that God has given us. We can show that through our giving. So at this time, we'll have a word of prayer. And Brother Harvard, you lead us in prayer, please. For the kind and gracious Heavenly Father, all praise, honor, and glory are rightfully thine. All that is being assembled in your presence this morning, pray that our worship will be acceptable. And Father, we pray that this offering be used to your honor and glory. be seated.
It's torn up pages in this book Words that tell me I'm no good Chapters that defined me for so long But the hands of grace and endless love Dusted off and picked me up Told my heart that hope is never gone God is in this story God is in the details, even in the broken parts. He holds my heart, he never fails. When I'm at my weakest, I will trust in Jesus. Always in the highs and lows, the one who goes before me. God is in this story. So if the storm you're walking through feels like it's too much and you wonder if he even cares at all, well hold on tight to what you know, he promised he won't let you go, your songs of healings written in his scars, God is in this story. God is in the details, even in the broken parts. He holds my heart, he never fails. When I'm at my weakest, I will trust in Jesus. Always in the highs and lows, the one who goes before me. God is in this story. If it reads like addiction, He's the one who frees the prisoner. He's the healer of all things. If it reads like depression, if it reads a broken home, He's the one who holds your sorrow. He won't leave you here alone. God is in this story. God is in the details. Even in the broken parts, he holds my heart, he never fails. When I'm at my weakest, I will trust in Jesus. Always in the highs and lows, the one who goes before me. Always in the highs and lows, the one who goes before me. God is in this story. God is in my story. I was going to say that uh, Bella gets her singing from a mom, so, uh, but it is a, <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate her, and, you know, just truly blessed, you know, and just thinking about that, and, you know, as a father, you just, all you can hope for and pray for is that you see your children serving in, in the Lord, and, and I'm very grateful for that, and um, just grateful for this church, you know, and it's not just, you know, I don't, I couldn't do it without the influence that some of you have had on my family and my children, and, and I'm very grateful for that, and uh, just grateful for this opportunity this morning to lead out in this service today, um, put that over that way a little bit, um, so I began to think about this morning and thinking about this, uh, this time of year, I, I, you know, I said earlier, it's just a favorite time of year for a lot of people because it's just a reminder, it's a celebration of, of Christmas, and those of us who understand what Christmas is about. Really, Christmas is about the story of Jesus. And so that's what I want to share with you this morning. Just think about the story, the story of Jesus. And uh, it's God's story, ultimately, and it's God doing a work. But it's a story of God working through 
a promise, a promise of sending his son into the world, that he would make himself known through Jesus, that we can have life and have life everlasting. So as we go through this this morning, and uh, you can kind of follow along in the bulletin with the notes and everything, and, uh, and there's several other points probably that I could have at, used in this, but we're just going to stick with these, these few that I've, I've mentioned here to think about. We're going to be looking at very familiar passages of Scripture, too, as well, to kind of go through this this morning. It should be very familiar passages. But, uh, you know, if you think about the story of Jesus and the story of Christmas, it's because of the story of Jesus. We understand that it is a story. It has to begin with understanding that it is a story of love, a story of love. And a uh, very familiar verse of Scripture that we often, uh, on Wednesday nights, I quote this every Wednesday night pretty much with our kids and our closing, and I know they get tired of it, and you've probably, you know, you've heard a lot, but it's a very important verse of Scripture, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world, right, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I know we think about, and I know the love of God is so important, and sometimes we feel like it can be overemphasized that we under, forget about the, all the other attributes of God, but it all begins with God's love. When we understand it completely, we appreciate it more. We understand the importance and how it are to motivate us in our lives. Because through His love, it's, He offers grace and forgiveness and mercy and all those things. But it begins by recognizing the importance of love, God's love. It's a story of love, the greatest story ever told. You know, it's a love story, a love story of God's love for us, that he would send his son into the world. And so, and through that, we can have a, an appreciate a life of motivation. One another verse of scripture that I like to quote, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, uh, Paul writing there, it says, For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And life which I now live in this flesh or this body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, and gave himself for me. Probably my most two favorite verses of scripture, those are just because they're easy and they remind us of some things, you know. Of all the other scriptures, we can, these two verses really sum up things in terms of God's plan and purpose, understanding God's love for us. But through faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we can have a life in Christ, allowing Christ to live in us because we know that he, he loves us and he gave himself for us that we can have that life. And so the Christmas story is a story of love, and I think it's important that we recognize that this morning, understanding the love of God for you and for me this morning, that God does love you. He loved you so much that he would send Jesus into the world, and Christmas is a reminder of that, of Christ actually coming into the world. And so we think about that idea of the story of love, but through his love, it also is a, not just that Christ would come into the world, but it is, he came into the world for a specific purpose, and that was to save his people from their sins. So the next point is a story of redemption. In Matthew, we're going to look at the story of the gospel of Matthew. and um, Matthew chapter 1, we see, you know, it's interesting. We think about this the overriding narratives of the scriptures and how they flow. You know, we, we understand the importance of what is transpiring as we get into the, the gospels. And it's interesting to me how scriptures have laid these things out and and reveals this story, and the Bible itself revealing this narrative to us, that from the very beginning we see what happened when man sinned against God, but God chose that he would establish himself with a people, right? And the Old Testament is about that relationship that God established through Abraham, and that promise, right? And throughout the story of the Old Testament we read, and we see, again, the, the sin, its effects, and how it hindered that relationship, and how but yet God remained faithful and true to his promise, and and even then, at the end of the Old Testament, we see kind of, we're kind of left, you know, how, what's, what's fixing to happen with these people, you know, because they were carried away in captivity, and now we see God's grace beginning to kind of come about, and just kind of waiting and anticipating, and is God really going to fulfill that promise? And then, we flip over into Matthew, and what do we read? We read this genealogy in chapter 1 that points it to Jesus, and it begins this new chapter, this story of God fulfilling that purpose, and through that purpose, we know that he would bring forth Jesus through a couple of Mary and Joseph. Of course, we see that and recognize that, and, and, and the angel appeared first to, to Mary, and, and, and uh, we see that how she was conceived by the Holy Spirit with this child, and you can imagine just the, the anxiety and things that she felt and how she was going to explain this, and then, of course, how Joseph would respond to it, but the angel appeared to Joseph. Right? 
In verse 20, And while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which she has conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Story of redemption. Because mankind, the sin, its effect on, our, on us separates us from God. And God's love would bring about a plan to restore that, what God desires to have as a relationship with you and with, his, with people, with His creation. And through Christ and what Christ would do through coming into the world and live a life and pay a price for our sins, we can have everlasting life. It's a story of redemption. Uh, you know, we think about just the story and how important it is for us. And nobody likes a story that's just depressing with no end, no hope, right? What, what point is that? But we live where God offers a, a story of, 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 of redemption, for you and for me, that through our faith and trust in Christ, we can have everlasting life. In Ephesians chapter 1, uh, Paul writes, talking about this passage of Scripture, uh, in, here in Ephesians chapter 1, and I love how he talks about in this letter dealing uh, there with the, those believers there in Ephesus, but verse 6, it says, "...to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in, and in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through His blood." The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. What a, what a great story that Paul recognized the importance of that. That it was through God's love that He would love us. But then in Him through we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. What a story for us to think about this morning. We think about Christmas that we too can have forgiveness of our sins because of Christ coming into the world. And through that... Redemption, we can have hope. Hope. It's a story of hope. Because as you go through and you begin to turn over to, to Luke chapter 1, you know, that's another one of the other gospel accounts of, of the story of, 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 of the beginnings of Christmas and the story of uh, that surround the coming of Christ into the world. But in Luke chapter 1, this is before uh, we see the actual Mary giving birth, but she was with this child and and, and Mary ha and, and Joseph has decided to take her, and, and yet while they were waiting for this child to be born, uh, it was wise for her to be go to her, her cousin Elizabeth, who was also with child. And it wasn't by coincidence that this was the case, because God, in His infinite wisdom and knowledge, was doing a work in the world. And we see that because we know that Elizabeth was going to give birth to John the Baptist, who was a forerunner of Christ, preaching in the wilderness. And even there in that account, we see that in that interaction with Mary and Elizabeth, how it confirmed with Mary how special this child was as, as they approached each other. And I think is maybe is in this account where Elizabeth felt the child in her, John the Baptist, leaping for joy when Mary approached them. But in that, in that, in that process, Mary responded with this song in, in Luke chapter 1. I want to read this because think about the story of hope because Mary understood the importance of these things. And I, I love this song, the song that Mary declares there in Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 46. It says, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he hath in his mighty, hath, for he that is mighty hath done, me, done to me great things, and to his holy, and his holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. His mercy is upon them that fear him from generation to generation. A great song, a declaration of Mary understanding the hope that she now has because of God's mercy and what God is doing, the work that he was going to do through her in bringing this child into the world. We have great hope today. And I pray that we would understand the value of hope, the hope that Christmas brings, that we can know the Lord, have a relationship with God. And Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that ye may abound in hope to the power of the Holy Ghost. And, you know, we need hope in this world, and Christmas brings that hope. People need to see that and understand that, and we can embrace that this morning. And through the hope that we know, because of our faith and trust in the Lord, we can have joy in our hearts. And that's what the next is, the story of joy story of joy, right? You know, it's easy to kind of focus on all the negative things in the world that we see, right? 
And I have a bad habit of that a lot of times. I just, you know, it's just it's easy to get caught up and just complain about things I have no control over. But I think when it comes to my faith, my faith ought to be a life of joy. A life of joy. Uh, and you read that in the story, in the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2, right? What do we see in Luke chapter 2, verses 10, right? As the angels appeared uh, unto the shepherds, right? It says, and the, and the angels said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, what shall be to all people. That's the message they began by exclaiming. You know, they could have said anything else, but they began to, by saying, Fear not, you know, because they were afraid to see in the angels. Wouldn't you be afraid if all of a sudden these angels appeared to you? And there they were. But yet, then the first thing they said, For behold, I bring you good tidings, or good news of great, excuse me, great joy, which shall be to all people. Christmas story is a story of joy. We ought to have joy in our hearts and, and, and it overflowing in our life because we know who holds tomorrow. We know who the God of the universe is. We know what He's done for us. He's given us a life, an everlasting life, a life of of uh, this great joy ought to be in our hearts because of what he's done. This is what the story ought to remind us of. You know, great joy, good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. And through the joy of that, we can have a peace, the story of peace. Because later after they said that, verse 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Right? And it shall be a sign to you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. A story of peace. You know, we, so much turmoil in the world. You know, people desire to have peace. And, you know, nobody likes to live a life where there's, no, where there's just all this uncertainty and threat of conflict. You know, and, and unfortunately, we live in a sinful and a fallen world, and there's always going to be that conflict in this world, as long as sin is in the world, the conflict that it brings. But through our faith and trust in Christ, we can have a peace, because we have assurance of the things that God has given to us, the truths of God's Word, that we can have joy, but through joy, experience peace in our lives, that no matter what we face, even death, even death, we, can have, we know that even in death... Because of our faith and trust in Christ, it's not the end for us. And we can experience everlasting life. But it brings peace and assurance of those things. And we can have celebrate those things. It says, in, uh, you know, glory to God in the highest. On our earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And think about these stories. The story of love, redemption, hope, joy, and peace. And, and there's maybe some other things I said earlier as I began, you know, that I, I thought about later. But, you know, you think about this story of, of Christmas and, you know, uh, we like to keep the things positive. And these things are positive things and I want us to keep positive. But it's also we can look at it in terms of, from a personal standpoint, because of sin, you can look at it as a story of sacrifice. A story of, uh, uh, because think about what Mary and, and Joseph, you know, and just traveling to Bethlehem, all the things and the, that they had to, to sacrifice in, 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 in their lives to, to, to follow through and, and to, for her to carry this child and all the things. And it's also, it can be a story of solitude and, uh, because, uh, you know, think they got there to the end, there was no room for them in the end, right? But all these things, again, bring, bring us a, a great assurance, though, that all, no matter what we face in life, it is a story for us to embrace, because of the things that we understand it to be, because it is a story of love, because it is a story of redemption, because it is a story of joy and peace and hope. And therefore, what should our response be to those things? And there's three things I want to kind of conclude with looking at this story, because first of all, it, it is a story that we should be willing to tell, right? Our response is it ought to be a story to tell, right? Because even after the end, we see that as the shepherds came there and they found... Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. In verse 17 of chapter 2, it says, When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. You know, they made known. They made known this story. Wouldn't you, I mean, 
for them, it was there no hesitancy for them to go and tell what they experienced. This uniqueness of the story makes it possible for us to share because it is unique. And so we think about those things, and it is a story that we need to tell this Christmas. It's a story of, and in telling so, tell it in the way that reflects these things. That it is about Jesus coming into the world, that God will love us, send his son into the world. But it's also a story that we should ponder, as we saw uh, in, in uh, verse 19, you continue, Mary, is, after everything was done, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. You know, we ought to personally reflect on this story in our lives because it, it is personal. For Mary, it was personal that God would choose to use her in this capacity, but for us, it is personal because it wasn't just that she was this child, that Christ coming into the world was a promise of God that, again, for whosoever shall believe, a child given for all humanity, they may have hope, have everlasting life. And for Mary to keep those things and to ponder those things, reflect on these things. And, you know, we need to reflect on this story as much as we can because, again, it's a reminder. It ought to be a motivating factor in our lives and how we respond to, the, to what Christ and what God has done and, and through our faith and trust in Christ transform our lives to live a life that pleases Him and honors Him so that others could come to know Him in turn in faith. And lastly, it is a story that we can celebrate. It says, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The shepherds returned. They went back and it said, They glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard. You know, Christmas time ought to be a time of celebration. And, and, I, and I want to spend a little time kind of concluding on this because it's important to recognize about our Christmas celebrations and how we celebrate Christmas. And uh, if we're honest, most of us, we understand the story, but yet, even still, how often do we really, in our celebrations, really reflect and celebrate where we are actually in a place where we're actually worshiping and being thankful and responding and reflecting on Christ and what he's done for us, right, in our celebrations. You know, we get together families, and those things are important. But when you get together with families, is it just family time or is it time at some point during that time of celebration do you spend reflecting and reminding your family that it's about Jesus? You know, within your families, it's, you know, we, we spend a lot of time. We think about a lot of different things that we were engaged in. How do we celebrate Christmas? How are you going to celebrate Christmas this year? Are you going to go through the traditions that you normally do? And then when it's over, just say, oh, I'm glad it's over and then you begin to worry about how you're going to pay back all those credit card bills, right, from what you spent on Christmas. Is that how you're going to celebrate it this year? Or are you going to celebrate it, reminding yourself of the joy and the hope of what Christ did as you came into the world? And, I mean, the simplest thing we can do is just read the story. Luke chapter 2, read that story. And, you know, you can go back to chapter 1, read the whole, whole encounter. And just read it. Remind yourself of those things. It's important that we do that. But oftentimes I think we understand that uh, it does sometimes get out of balance. So I want to challenge you to take inventory of what your Christmas looks like and ask yourself if that Jesus is in the center of it all. What I mean by that is that do you, you know, just take inventory. Not just, you know, when you talk about how you celebrate Christ and Christmas and uh, you know, I think this is just something we talked about during Christmas, but every day of our lives, we need to think about how we live our lives, especially this time of year, you know, don't get caught up, and I, and I, I love all the lights, I love all the things that we do, and it, it, but in reality, it's all about Jesus, and we have to recognize that, and somehow or another realize that is the story that we celebrate, that is who we acknowledge of God's love for us. Uh, do we get fixated on the things, you know, we get so worried about what we're going to get for Christmas or all of our shopping or all of our getting all, you know, all of our busy, busy. It gets busy. I know Christmas is busy. You know, it's been busy the last few weeks, you know, involved with, you know, we did the Christmas parade and, and they had all the different things. And, but at the end of the day, you know, are we really trying to promote Christ and celebrate Christ the way that we should? I, I want to share this, you know, not to, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, uh, just in, you know, we had a float in the Christmas parade, and I appreciate 
uh, the work, we try to do a theme, let go and let God, and we try to make it an emphasis on faith, an emphasis on point, the true meaning of Christmas. And, but this, as the float goes through the town, you know, seeing all these people, you know, gathered around the court square, there's probably four blocks or five blocks, just on both sides, people gathered around. And, and I was just taking kind of thought of that as going through that, thinking about these people. And I, I was like, I wonder if most of these people... They're here just to get candy, or they're here for whatever reason they're there. But shouldn't we be more concerned whether or not they know Jesus or not? And, uh, you know, there's opportunities that God gives us. And how do we celebrate Christmas? Are we telling the story, pondering it in our lives, letting it shape us and shape our attitudes and shape our thoughts so that we can have a life that reflects the things of what the story really truly is, is a story of great hope and love, joy and peace, willing to share that and tell it with others, pondering it in our heart and celebrating it. So I'm going to ask you this, this morning, thinking about how you truly, and then on the bulletin, I, I kind of left three blanks there, you can just be intentional, think about what are you going to do, you know, maybe do, check an inventory of your house, if you decorate, does, or if, if you got things just does it, does it remind people that this that you are serious about promoting the story of Christ this Christmas to people that may come into your home or wherever you go? Are you sharing that? Because it is a story, a story that needs to be heard because people need the Lord. And may this Christmas be an opportunity for us as a church to grow in that and understand that and appreciate that and value that. Because again, we don't know what tomorrow may hold. But I, we do know who holds tomorrow. And, and you look at the world and we see the, the pain and the suffering. But the answer to that message and is Jesus. And Jesus, when he came into the world, he made himself known that we can have everlasting life. My question is to you this morning, if you never put your faith and trust in him, would you do that this morning? I'm going to ask Sister Christy to go ahead and start making her way up. We'll have a verse of invitational hymn. And as she makes her way, would you please begin to stand this morning and prepare our hearts just to respond to this this morning and again a very simple passages of scripture and many of you know these stories you know you've heard this probably every Christmas you but I, but I think every year as we as the Lord allows us to live and experience this season that we don't lose sight of what's really important right you know in our hearts we may think well you know you know we just Really say, you know, I'm going to commit our life, my life to, to understand how important this story is. People's lives depend on it. You know, at some point somebody had to tell you this story to you if you know the Lord. And you responded to it because of your faith and trust in Christ. So if you're here this morning, you never put your faith and trust in Christ. I pray that you will acknowledge that and just simply turn to him in faith, trusting in him as your savior. Because that's why he came to save his people from their sins. He came that you may have life, life everlasting, and life more abundantly. Would you respond this morning as we sing? Yes, Christine. Mm -hmm.